It's Joselo. Thank you for stopping by. For many years now, I have been interested in making a steam model engine. When the idea first came to my mind, I tried to do it using wood and cardboard, with no good results. I even asked my Ford boy for his Stirling engine plans, which he kindly sent to me. But I couldn't even make that one. Our home workshop was equipped for woodworking, so my father and me had to start the metal workshop from scratch. We made an aluminum foundry. We also got a mini lathe and a mini mill. I started by understanding the basics of a mobile motor. Then I moved on to design and draw all the pieces in order to settle the dimensions. I'm sorry for the lack of illustrating material, but while doing this project I never thought of making a video out of it. So here's how the motor is supposed to look like. I simulated motion to check for any hits between the pieces but decided to do a nice movie out of it. The first part I did was the frame. I wanted it to be stylish with continuous curves. I also wanted to make profit of my new sand casting process. So I started by making the templates for cutting the model, cutting the layers, pasting, filling, sanding and painting it, until I got a nice casting model. Next thing to do was casting. I prepared the sand, the mold, melted the aluminum and poured, getting my cast piece. It has some minor defects, but was still usable. Even with those defects, I was able to machine the frame. I discovered too late that I forgot to think about some casting datums and clamping surfaces, so holding this piece was a challenge throughout the whole project. I used a file to work all the edges, leaving a smooth finish on the outside and a rough casting look in the inside. The next part was the cylinder. I made it from my homemade aluminum, because I thought I would probably mess up and I'd rather do it on cheap material. I squared it on a mill, marked the center, drilled and bored to half an inch. I also drilled the intake hole and drilled and tapped the axle hole. Next was the piston. Again, I used my aluminum. I mounted it on the lathe, faced it, rounded it, drilled it and tapped it to screw the connecting rod. The piston fits snug on the cylinder, and I'm happy with it. Next was the crankshaft. I started by making an arbor with a screw to hold an aluminum block. I rounded it on the lathe and then moved it to the rotary table in the mill. I first drilled a small hole on the top to have some support from the material. Then I milled both quadrants to give the final shape. I also made the axle and a pin for the crankshaft, which I pressed into their places using my homemade press. The conrod was an easy one. I rounded it from a sort of rebar, then clamped it on the mill with a b-block and drilled. I also made a special screw which acts as the axle for the cylinder. Another easy one was the bearing. I know the friction pieces could be better if made from bronze, but bronze is just expensive to play with it. I rounded and drilled it on the lathe and press fitted it into the frame. Finally, I made the flywheel. I got my father's help and got the casting model 3D printed in my brother's printer, then sanded and nicely painted. Then we prepared the aluminum and poured into the mold. The large mold on the right side is a part of my father needs for his CNC router. The first casting had many flaws, but the other two were very good. In case you're wondering what happened to my father's piece, it was incomplete and it took three more attempts to get it done. To machine it, I made an arbor and glued the casting to it. This allowed me to access the casting from both sides and kept it very stable. I machined some grooves on the flywheel for it to hold the lead that I would later mill around with. I also drilled and tapped a pin hole to hold it to the shaft. As I mentioned before, I poured some lead around the flywheel to make it, well, a real flywheel. The first and second and third and, well, many attempts didn't work correctly, mostly because I was trying to melt the lead in place with a torch rather than puring it, which didn't allow me to clean the drag and draw from it. Finally, I got a decent lead ring, which I was able to turn later. Again, I got some help from my father to make the base for the motor. He really outdid himself finishing the pine good mahogany like. 
I also had my girlfriend help me in etching an aluminum plate with child electro etching. After etching, we put some Chinese ink into the engraving, polished and coated it for protection. Now that I have all the pieces, it's time to assemble the wobbler, oil it up and get it running. I added a reverse valve to the project. It is the one on the right side of the image. Unfortunately, I don't have any photo of its making. Finally I'm done with this project. It's been two years since I started and I'm glad to share my results with you. I really hope you like them. See you later.